Welcome back to Geomancy. Thank you for joining me. Part 2 of America is the Old World. We're going to start in Philadelphia looking at Commerce Square across the Schuylkill River. Philly is a pretty amazing city. I've already said that. We will be covering many places, some new, some old. Some very old. I was walking down the street and noticed those Dutch gables. Good thing we do our architectural history research. Just like with this building. Covered that one already. They were looking at me and I was looking at them. This building was part of a much bigger gas network the Philadelphia Gas Works, which I talked about in my video, Fueling the Ancient Grid. All across Philadelphia, you've got buildings for giants. Really skilled giants. who needed to live well. Twelve foot ceilings and stories buried below. This is the abandoned railway next to Baldwin Park which runs along our Gates of Hell ley line that I covered in the last video. And the retaining wall is about two stories below ground, which is more than I initially thought. And this is the Rodin Museum, which is along that Gates of Hell ley line. Seems to be an older shell of something. There's the Gates of Hell by Auguste Rodin in the background. So naturally we're gonna go to Point State Park in Pittsburgh and show where I ended that ley line at a star fort. And this is an artist rendering of what it used to be. I bet he had a hidden hand in it. Young George. And this is the spot where that fort was. I showed this clip in part one. So the French built it in 1754, heard the English were coming, Destroyed it in 1758. Yep. Easy as that. Right where the three rivers meet. As I showed in the part one, Pittsburgh is full of amazing buildings. Really everywhere is. That's the point of this. Like Harrisburg. Who's seen green domes? 
Okay, Pennsylvania. Gold wasn't enough. Still got the old world everywhere. This is a place that I've driven by several times and had to stop and see what it was about. It was a boys school for troubled youth, as they say, I guess. They weren't troubled. <laughs> but this was a place that housed boys and it seems very much like these asylums that we see all over. Sorry for the lens flare. It was sunny. But again, I don't think that these buildings were needed for their purpose. They were clearly inherited. And if this was the only one, okay, sure. But there are so many of these types of buildings and asylums and whatnot all over the world that were once used and they're abandoned now. Here in Durham, North Carolina, this is possibly one of the deepest foundations I've seen with windows buried well below ground level. I do not know what the purpose of this would be. But as I've shown in part one, a lot of the South seems to have been buried. Just like the rest of the world. And also in Durham is Duke University, which is a spectacle. Featuring one of our favorite building types. The whole campus is gothic. And it was said to have been designed by Julian Abel. A young black architect from Philadelphia. Who also designed the Philadelphia Art Museum. Pretty phenomenal feats. For a man of his complexion at the time he was said to have been doing these. I, I honestly, I don't know how, if the narrative were taught about black people, swarthy people, is true. So in the Jim Crow South, he was sitting up there designing this. I don't know. Same Antiquitech. Antennas. I mean, these buildings are amazing. Another elite university, Princeton. Just behind that building was a train station. The whole campus is amazing. And most of these people walking around probably have little idea how amazing these buildings are. I look like a tourist when I'm standing, <laughs> but I don't care. I'm trying to figure out why they needed temples and all of this. For college kids? Nah. So 
switching it up Niagara Falls New York very amazing place in the early 1900s was home to a lot of hydroelectric development And the place is breathtaking. Apparently the Canadian side has a better view. And down there you can see the remnants of the former hydroelectric processing, I'm assuming. nearby Buffalo and we've got twin statue of liberty atop twin pyramids nice Why the need for all of these buildings? As we've already been talking about, were they really all religious? I bet whoever met in this place knew. the stonework I'll tell you what these builders needed to be well fed and rested everywhere there could have been no war going on there would have needed to have been abundance surplus men are happy women are happy children are happy The laws are just, business is booming. That's the only way all of this architecture gets done at the time that it was said to have been done. Unfortunately, none of those things were happening. There was constant war. There was hardly surplus. The 1800s, there was a war every week basically all around the world but we see the same story and this guy's everywhere how many times have I showed a clip in this video or part one where George Washington is standing in front of some building with half buried windows. The Erie County Courthouse.
down to Washington DC to the National Cathedral which they've been renovating for the last 12 years due to an earthquake. Yes, an earthquake hit the East Coast in 2011. But this building is actually one of the few that was said to have been built entirely in 20th century from 1907 to 1990. It is interesting to think that during all the political and social turmoil of the 20th century, the world wars, they were able to get that building up and Duke University. But there are parts of it like here, the Bishop's Garden, which seem like they're a lot older. And perhaps the newer cathedral was merely built on top of something existing. This building speaks for itself. It's pretty amazing, regardless of when it was built. Though I will be digging into some construction photos of it because I want to see this building be built from the cornerstone. Not halfway, not putting the roof on. None of that stuff that we're familiar with. What do you think they're keeping in here behind those doors? Just in front of the Capitol is this old fountain. And the statue atop the Capitol was said to have been engineered to get there by a former slave. The classic slave did it narrative for amazing structures around the world. I'm not buying it. Bet they know. Cincinnati probably has the best brickwork of any city. And I wonder if that's really why they're called the Cincinnati Reds. Because the brickwork is second to none. Now, of course, we go in and we paint it and, you know, add flower pots and this and that. But originally, the brick all throughout the city was fantastic. And you'll see examples of that in this video and part one, if you haven't seen that. Really just masonry in general. 
I don't know what I was expecting from a Midwest town, but it wasn't anything like this. And speaking of this, what happened? My best guess is that this whole area was a reservoir. And at some time, it broke. And I bet it caused massive flooding throughout the whole city. I wonder if it lines up with any of the mud floods or earth changes, natural phenomenon or unnatural phenomenon that many like myself are researching because this doesn't make any sense. I mean, I can't explain what we're looking at or when it happened. And again, it was paved in brick. It was a road connecting one part to the other And it broke. Just in the distance, we see some of the infrastructure. These kinds of water towers are all over the world. And one thing I know is that whoever the builders of the old world were, they had supreme use and knowledge of water and how to control it. And again, with the amazing brickwork, they're just showing off. I mean, <laughs> but also form follows function. So this structure needed to be the way it is. There's an electric warning. So I wonder if this is like some hydroelectric converter or some type of battery. Again, with the masonry skills. Except you gotta wonder, why would they put a door there? Or maybe they wouldn't and the whole level was different. Cincinnati has many hills. I think seven. Like Rome. Look at that. Savannah has probably some of the nicest homes of large old world inhabitants. They must have been large because everything in the city is scaled very largely. Just like everywhere. One thing about Savannah is that many of the homes have stairways leading up, as you see. But they also have full apartment units, ground level and below. 
What is that an indication of? You can pause if you like to read signs. Otherwise, let's keep it moving. Not a bad police headquarters. Established 1854. What, they didn't need cops before then? When was this built? This is the part of the city that's down by the river. And it seems as though the city is built on top of itself. At least twice. Not bad brick either. Wow. Charleston and the palm trees, just like Savannah, there's something about old world architecture next to palm trees. Beneath this is a whole market that goes several blocks. Pretty cool place. But a lot of cities have places like that. So we're going to end on some cemeteries. This is Laurel Grove South, which was said to have been for former slaves and freed people. Although these two plots that I showed you bear the names of two of the major streets in Savannah, Broughton and Drayton streets. And here is a very old headstone. This is the Huguenot Church Cemetery in Charleston. With some similar very old headstones. And around the corner, this is the St. Philip's Church Cemetery. Again, with some similar headstones. I always wonder, how do they carve these back in the day? Because it's almost perfect, like it's printed. And this is Laurel Hill Cemetery in Philadelphia. Many prominent Philadelphians were buried here, including Matthias Baldwin, who we've been on the track of. <laughs> but there are many interesting things around this cemetery. For that tree to be on top of those two mausoleums, how old do you think that tree is? Well, that does it for this video. If you're still watching, thank you for going on this journey with me through the old world that is America. Hopefully you've learned something and at least have been entertained by the amazing structures and buildings and sites throughout the United States. Take care. Stay blessed.